Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Super Sourcecast. I'm your host Nan Tendrix and joining me today is Push Dustin. Hello. And the Anvil. Hello. So Anvil, this is your first time on the podcast. How are you feeling? I'm uh, doing alright, yeah. So we usually start these off by just giving a, uh, you know, what, how everyone's feeling, what they've been playing recently. So why don't we start that with you then? What have you been playing recently? Uh, I've been playing a bunch of Mario Odyssey, obviously, and I busted out my Dreamcast and I've been playing a bunch of Shenmue too. I need to try and fix my Dreamcast. I got a bunch of games from it a while back, including the first Marvel vs. Capcom game. Yeah. And I don't know if that one works, because it, it, the guy gave it to me for free because he said that they couldn't test it. Oh. But I haven't been able to test it because <laughs> I don't know if my Dreamcast works. <laughs> and I think it's missing a wire or something, that all the wire itself is broken. And mm-hmm. I haven't had the chance, it's pain. You need to get MVC2. Yeah, I've got. I have it on Xbox 360. Oh. Uh, I, th- I think it's still on my hard drive. I know you can't download it anymore from the Xbox Store, so I'm hoping it's still on my hard drive. I did just get Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 on uh, PS4. How, have so, you played it yet? I played it a bit. I, I played it before on Xbox as a rental. Yeah. Back when you could rent video games here, and I. Beat, I beat, beat it as best as I could, and I decided to buy it again in the Black Friday sale for like seven quid. And I'm just going to pretend it's infinite and uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretend it's the most up to date one. But yeah, I played through it as um, well. I played through it as like Deadpool and all that, and then lost against Galactus, swapped to Ryu and won. And so I got Ryu's ending because of that. But yes, uh, push. What are you playing at the moment? Uh, recently, I've been playing Rive, which is a game that I will be reviewing for Source Gaming, as well as Mario Odyssey. Okay. All right. So um, I haven't gotten that much further in Mario Odyssey just because um, this past week has been uh, incredibly busy for, uh, for my personal life and work. So um, basically, I only Rive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been busy for me. I beat Mario Odyssey last week, I think. Mm-hmm. And so... I've just been messing around with a few random fighting games with Marvel vs. Capcom and a game that I bought for a friend, which is like some Japanese visual novel fighting Mm -hmm. game, which is just really random and is uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Nothing amazing. But I've recently started playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2 for review. Mm -hmm. And I've just been like smashing that one out as quickly as I can because we got it quite... Quite a bit later than I think most other reviewers did. Yeah. So, and the game, well, by the time this podcast comes out, the game will either be just about to come out, like a few days or not. And I will leave most of my thoughts on the game for the actual review. But so far, so good. I'm uh, quite enjoying it. And uh, hopefully I can get a lot further into it before I have to actually start making this review. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's one thing, um, like when playing games for reviews and when playing games on your own, it's kind of like a different, um, you play it, you play it a little bit differently, I think. Yeah. Like all my free time has gone to playing through this game. I'm already like, I think I've been playing it for two days and I'm like 27 hours through or something like that. Two, yeah. three days. And, and that's also while working like full, a full job. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but, um, no, yeah, this, uh, it's, it's fun so far, but you do play it try and streamline and beeline your way to the uh, finish for review. Anyway, let's move on to our new stories of the day. So the first one that we're going to talk about are these new Kirby figures that are coming out. I think they're gacha figures, and it's the Shakureru Kirby mm-hmm. figures, the ones with the really big chins. Jay Leno yeah. chins. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can get um, Kirby, King Dedede, Meta Knight, Wispy Woods, the Sleeping Enemy, and Kirby on a Warp Star. There's also a Sleeping Kirby. Yeah. Oh, is it Sleeping Kirby? I thought it was yeah. just the. Key- I thought it was the Sleeping Enemy. It might just. Be no, this. no, Sleeping oh, okay. Kirby. There's like three versions of Kirby. Oh, okay. So, Push, can you explain what this is? So, um, the Shakureru, they are like a line of gacha toys, as you mentioned, and. Um, you just basically pay like um, 300 yen or so and you just get a random capsule um, from the machine and 
hopefully you can try to complete the set. So uh, apparently there's a little story that goes along with this, and they're actually on the Shakuru Pupupu Planet, though. <laughs> which oh, okay. is um, <laughs> Poo 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 is a uh, dreamland in Japanese so oh, I thought okay. it was just hilarious I was like Poo 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 Planet though yeah. so it's just a alternate reality version where everyone on this planet has the big chin is that yes. the <laughs> <laughs> that's the story <laughs> will it Will it become canon one day <laughs> one is can only canon hope. already <laughs> um, but I thought it was kind of interesting because um there's this, and um, I was actually just talking to my girlfriend about this um, tonight, where uh, there's you see a lot more Nintendo collaborations in mm-hmm. general this year, yeah. like um, more so than any other year. And you can really see, um, you know, Wada's decision before he passed away that uh, Nintendo was trying to really push out their IPs. Yeah. Like this is this is this is the year that it's really coming into play. Because um, I just went to Seven Eleven. I just got like a Mario Odyssey um, Ichiban Kuji, the the random prize draw. Oh okay, yeah. They had like a random prize draw, and like you could you could get a cappy, you could get uh, towels, and I ended up getting like a really small plate with a Mario <laughs> Odyssey design on it that had like seven of the kingdoms on it. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's so nice. like, I wish you got that sort but, of stuff over here. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you just there's so many collaborations recently. Like Lawson, uh, just a couple, couple months ago, had another Kirby collaboration. I know they have the Kirby uh, Nikumon right now. Which looks like Kirby's bleeding if you open it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen that. I have uh, the bun. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. E- eating Kirby's face alive. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be like maximum tomato flavor. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I unfortunately, feel like that's I, not thought through very uh, well. <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't get to try it. Uh, uh, I asked if they had any left, but they didn't have any. Um, but yeah, there's just so so much stuff coming out recently. It's it's like kind of hard to keep uh, keep track. Kirby's had a um, big year, obviously, because it's his yep. anniversary. Like there was the Kirby train and all that stuff going on across the mm-hmm. across Japan earlier this year, and then three games. What well, yeah, three games have come out this year as well, with the th- with the fourth one for the Switch announced, and all yep. these different collaborations. Did that Taiko Drum game also come out this year? The one with Kirby in it, or was that I last that year? Came, I think that came out last year. Okay, so I'll include it anyway. <laughs> I think they just released a Meta Knight and Android as well. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. Yep. Yeah. So they're really like pushing. Didn't they release a um another Android of the Planet Robobot? Like I a really so. big one. I'm pretty sure it's out next year. Okay. So yeah, Kirby seems to be getting yeah a lot of love because it's his anniversary. And do we know who's mm-hmm. the next uh, anniversary? Is I guess is there any? I mean, um, I can't, I don't know what year Fire Emblem came out. I know Smashes is in um 2019. But obviously, Pokemon, Mario, and Zelda, all, and Metroid all just had theirs. Yeah. So I'm trying to think who and who next, or will we get a random year like we did with the year of Luigi? <laughs> just so Animal that they Crossing? got some sort of year. Maybe? When did Animal Crossing first come out? When did it, it was in 98? 1998. Maybe then, yeah. Maybe. I mean, because like, it was like towards the end of the N64 life cycle. Yes, it was. Um, I'm going to quickly look this up because if it is 1998, then next year they could. You know, it's, it would be 20 years since the first Animal Crossing game. So that would be the perfect time to launch the next Animal Crossing game for Switch. Mm-hmm. Like, and then uh, celebrate it as a, uh, yeah, anniversary we want. Oh, uh, no, it wasn't. It was apparently 1996. Really? Oh, wow. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. Sorry. It's, um. oh, no. It was in 2001. It's actually a Is very the, late uh, game. There's that's the, the N6, um, N64 version. Yeah, the N64 version. Oh apparently. wow! So yeah, it's like the last. Yeah, it's one of the last Nintendo 64. So we got a uh, yeah till 2021. Then I guess for the 20th anniversary of that. I think that's the same as Pikmin. Maybe. Jeez. Anyway, <laughs> I guess we'll find out whatever Nintendo decides to. Maybe we'll get the year of Warrior instead. Like everyone. Hopefully, wants. maybe they'll announce so, they bought Banjo. <laughs> 20 years of banjo. <laughs> so, next, we will have the next uh, news story is actually about Pokemon, and that is that Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon have come out and sold about as expected, really, for a third version. Nothing major, nothing uh, really. Didn't not like Pokemon Sun and Moon uh, sold, which was, I think, a record breaking for the series. 
Yeah, especially coming off the heels of uh, Pokemon Go. Yeah, I think that's why. But yeah, Ultra and Ultra Moon have sold far less than that. And I think that's apparent by all three of us got Pokemon Sun and Moon. I don't think any of us have got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, have we? Uh, no. That's correct. Yeah. Do you have any plans to buy it, Anvil? I was thinking about it, but there's so many games coming out at the moment. I absolutely grew to hate Sun, so I kind of... I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel like there are so too many games coming out that, that are more new and refreshing that I don't think um, playing through Sun and Moon again is going to be... <laughs> too interesting i am wondering if they fix some of the issues i have some friends who played ultra um, regular sun and moon and had a lot of problems with it especially with how story focused it was which i didn't mind so much but it definitely especially early on stops and starts you constantly yeah there's a lot of tutorials those walls of text were just brutal yeah but i have no idea if ultra sun ultra moon fixed that or if they doubled down on it and made it more story focused i think they could fix a lot of those issues with, with just letting you skip the the dialogue with you know by pressing start or something i think yeah if you just skip it it might just solve and yeah, there's should... a lot of things i mean i think pokemon should have a hard mode anyway for veteran players that allow you to give, kind of give you benefits in new game plus where you could just skip stories i understand having tutorials there for younger for people who might be their first pokemon game especially with sun and moon when it changed a lot but like i think there's, there's still a lot of stuff that pokemon needs to do to make it more user friendly yeah, I think they um they're making like more of the legendaries available in this version. Yeah, well, I think that's what they 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 made their main draw. It's like, look at all the legendaries are back, all the villains are back, everyone's yeah. back. It's like, I think Black and White Two kind of did the same thing by being like, oh hey, look at this arena where you can fight every gym leader and every elite four member from every single game so far, all in one place. And you could catch, like, all the Pokemon. I guess they would just realize that the third version would appeal more to the hardcore fans. Yeah, I think I think they shove it full of nostalgia and stuff because otherwise people won't buy the third version because they've already played the game through once. Which is also why they tried with Black and White 2 to completely um, make a complete brand new story and stuff. And they've kind of done a mixture of that with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon because it's a new story, but it's also said at the same time that Sun and Moon is, and it's just a retelling, and it's just I don't know, a big confusing <laughs> mess. Pokemon canon is confusing mess. Yeah, the timeline is a mess. But, um, I guess, do we think this is um, the last Pokemon 3DS game we'll see? Oh yeah, they said so. No, but like, I mean, I guess it doesn't need to be main light. Well, all right, I go, right uh, two, another question. Do you think Pokemon uh, the next mainline Pokemon game on the Switch will be coming out next year or in 2019? My, my guess is 2019. I, I think it's 2017, or sorry, 2018 for the Pokemon game. Or very very late. If it's 2018, it's going to be the holiday. I, I, yeah. I reckon mid-2019, probably. See, I think, I think they're going to try and push it, obviously, for uh, 2018. But whether it makes it or not is uh, another issue. Uh, it might come back. And it might be very um, bare bones, I guess maybe, or they might just hold it off. It, it really depends on how management goes. But they did had a, a massive break recently, and actually, I guess here's another point: Do you think that the next Pokemon game, the one for Switch, is going to be a the eighth generation of Pokemon, or do you think yes. it's going to be a seventh still? Yes, you say. And yeah, I think yeah, yeah, it's going to be Gen Eight, I would think. Okay. I think Gen Seven feels like it's shut with Ultra Moon now. Has any prior generation only had the four? Ga- Actually, does Heart Gold and, Heart- and Soul Silver count as Gen Four or Gen Five? Nobody knows. Fair. No, I feel like because if it's Gen Four, then poke but i feel like it's gen 5 just because i'm gen 7 and i guess gen 6 are like the shortest generations for pokemon seems seems like 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 it was gen 6 had x and y and then oras and then gen 7 just has sun and moon and then the third version and that and that's it whereas there was like i'm just trying to think though because diamond and pearl and platinum if they didn't have heart gold and source then they were pretty short as well if I feel like they did. I feel like it came before Black and White. 
and then black and white was just black and white and black and white too. I, I am thinking way too much about this. Let's move on to the next uh, <laughs> um, piece of news story, and it's about Ma- Mario Odyssey. Koizumi uh, recently had an interview, and he spilled a whole bunch of information about the uh, creation of the game and the concept of Super Mario Odyssey. Like, it was to make a new Mario that continues to stick in people's minds. And they wanted to do something that was interesting in a 3D world and something that was the that could fit into Mario but also not look like Mario from the outset. Yeah, like the dinosaur and New Donk City were examples yes. of things that are not Mario. Yeah. And I, I, I like that. I also like that how... I, I don't quite get this comment though. Previous Mario games had sympathy as their theme, but Odyssey has journey. I mean, I get the journey part of it, but sympathy for previous Mario? Who am I sympathizing with? Uh, I have to, I'll have to check the, the original Japanese, but he probably meant like as more like the 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 goal of those Mario games was to rescue the princess instead of like this journey. I guess. I mean, like it's more about the end goal than the. That that makes sense. That makes sense. But it's just like, it's just a really weird line. <laughs> a really weird. Comment. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know the the original Japanese, but it might be a translation error. Time for Source Gaming to get on that and <laughs> double check and put it in the comments. Well, um, I I think the other interesting point, at least for me. Is that they wanted? They were considering making Pauline a princess, and then decided against it because, it, but only because it didn't fit the city's setting. And I much Which rather that sense. because not every yeah. girl needs to be in the, in the series needs to be a princess. Yeah, like, it's on. actually <laughs> it's actually very nice to have Pauline not being the princess. Yeah, although does Rosalina still count as a princess? I mean, I, I feel like they've dropped the whole princess because usually when you have you know, in spin-off games, they they still call her Princess Peach, but I feel like they don't, and they never call her Princess Rosalina. It's always just Rosalina. I mean, she looks like a princess still. She she has a crown and everything. They should just strip Daisy of her crown. She doesn't need to be a princess anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Duchess Daisy. I think that sounds that fits better actually. Yeah. But um, no, I, I so I prefer that they didn't make it a princess. But it's it's an interesting insight to how the team think about it. I feel like maybe it was just because that's Mario tradition that that was the that was the idea. We'll just make her a princess because female character. But yeah, is there anything from this interview that really um, stood out to either of you guys? That um, the desert level is based off Mexico. I mean, it's obvious, but <laughs> um, like when you look at the level, but. Uh, just because uh, I think it was Koizumi enjoyed going to Mexico. Well, it was um, it wasn't Koizumi. It was Kenta Motokura, the director oh, of the game. Oh, I'm sorry. Koizumi was just the producer, if I recall. Yeah. But um, yeah. <laughs> it, it, oh, I like that Koizumi blames the fact that there are those tank enemies. Yeah. For the for reason the why ratings, it had an which, higher age rating, <laughs> which Sakurai was so. So confused about. <laughs> <laughs> I, we we translated that uh, on Source Game uh, on Source Gaming's Twitter account, and um, basically it was Sakurai ranting about how Mario Odyssey was given a, a ten and above rating when it should have been for everyone, <laughs> and um, you know age ratings like who 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 the hell they're rating in this game for. <laughs> it just makes things harder for us. <laughs> like this is the second time that Sakura has really kind of bitched about uh Zero and age ratings in general. He's salty over Tharja's not be Tharja not being included still. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean he, he Sakura does make a couple of good points. He's like, um, with the age ratings, like because of this age rating, like we couldn't the uh, Nintendo couldn't advertise um Mario Odyssey and like Koro Koro, for example. Because oh, it's oh, really? a, yeah oh, yeah well, because uh, Koro Koro is a kids magazine, so they can't have anything that's not rated for everyone. Oh okay, well, I, I know like Koro is a kids magazine because they do loads of kids manga and stuff like that, and team up with Nintendo quite a lot. But I, d- I didn't think that they'd know the age rating that far in advance. Well, I, I think like they can't like preview if it if it's been rated like that or something like that. That's a shame, but fair, fair enough. I guess blitz the tanks, blame the tanks. And well, uh, the realistic dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. Or the people. 
Sakurai thought it was the people. Too many people. <laughs> yeah, the real life people. You can't can't have realistic people in a, a game for everyone. No, people don't like yeah. looking at people. Like that's why yeah. they play video games, guys. Come on. Yeah, like like <laughs> kids might think that Mario might jump on them. <laughs> and then get possessed. scared that Mario might come for them. Maybe it was the the human <laughs> possession scene where you take over that human to drive that car. They're like that's just too dark. <laughs> uh, Anvil, is there anything from this interview that um, you find you think is interesting? Uh, just reading it now. It says here that uh, this is the biggest dev team to work on a 3D Mario. Yeah, it's de- it's like the biggest 3D Mario, so I think it kind of needs it. I think also Nintendo probably has more employees now than they did back in the yeah probably days of 64 and Sunshine. All right, anything anything else, or we'll just move on. One one thing I'll, I'll say about Mario Odyssey is that it was uh. It's nice that the game kind of released worldwide at the same time. I think did Galaxy and stuff like that. Did they all release worldwide? Um, 3D World did, and mm-hmm. I think 3D Land did as well. Galaxy, I'm not so sure about, but I may, Europe may have just got it really late. I mean, that was typical yeah. back then. So, mm-hmm. I'm not 100 percent sure, but that's a current Nintendo trend to try and get. Yeah. Yeah, all the games. I'm interested to see if Fire Emblem for Switch next year gets a worldwide release because Echoes mm. did, but Fates got it in Japan like a year before Europe. Did. Yeah, I think it might depend on the voice acting. Well, I mean, well, the thing about that is Echoes is fully voiced. It's the first Fire Emblem game to be fully voiced. Mm. Every line is voiced, unlike Fates, where it's like grunts and stuff for most of the dialogue. Oh. So they were either really efficient with it. <laughs> Oh, well, that's not the case at all. So I'm just I'm just curious, but we'll I guess we'll find out when it gets finally shown off in the next direct, probably. Yeah, which uh, rumors are circulating that it's probably soon. Uh, but some people say it's it's it's, de- it's probably January. I mean, the fir- it'll yeah. be like the first week or second week of January, I think. Mm-hmm. I think like, some people have it. thought it's December, and I feel like they won't bother. I mean, the last time we got a direct in December. It was like the weekend before Christmas, and I think it was the one where Rosalina was revealed for Smash. Mm. And apart from that, I think that's the last time we had one in December. It's always been January normally. Yeah. I think it's got to be pretty soon, because there's not much on the horizon. Uh, Nintendo need to announce some games. Well, Well, they have Kirby and Yoshi. Yeah, Kirby and Yoshi, and I think one of those will be an early... Probably Yoshi will probably be like mm-hmm. a January, February release. I think Jan- January is usually a very slow month. And apart from maybe a ra- announcing and releasing a random eShop game, I don't think Nintendo are going to have like anything major for that month. And then mm-hmm. February will be like Yoshi or a port of Tropical Freeze or something like that. Something to keep people tied over till the next major release. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, yeah. Galaxy did release worldwide, except in South Africa and Korea, oh. where it released a year later. So there we go. Uh, let's move on then to the next story, which is actually um, uh, not a, well. I guess it's kind of about. It's not really about video games. It's a uh, Black Friday uh, just passed as we record this, and Cyber Monday is coming up. And um, did either of you take any advantage of it? Uh I'm just, well. I'm I'm waiting for Cyber Monday, um, but. Uh, there might be some things I might buy, but I'm not sure. I picked up the Leighton Phoenix Wright game on the 3DS. No, oh, nice. It's a good one. It's um not as good as I think either of their games individually, but it's pretty good crossover. Like it manages to get both the elements of Professor Leighton and Phoenix Wright. It's going to be a while before I get there. I'm still on the second game in the trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> too too much in the backlog. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Well, I got um, a 128 gigabyte micro SD card for the Switch. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's I was, essential. Yeah, I was just out of space. I was. I saw that in the Black Friday deal on Amazon, there was a 400 gigabyte micro SD card that was available, but it was something mm. like 180 quid. And mm. I, um, as much as, as I'm sure that would have been like, I would never need to buy a micro SD card ever again, and I would never have any worries about space. I also cannot just throw out 180 quid right now. No. So yeah. I'll, I'll settle with the uh, £30 
128 gig one instead. It'll suit me for now, and now I can re-download Snake Pass because I had to delete. I had to delete it so I could put Xenoblade on my Switch. Oh, you didn't delete it for the icon? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> uh, but um, it's quite funny, actually. I don't know if either of you heard this, but apparently, at least in the UK and London, Black Friday was kind of a big flop in retail. Oh, really? Yeah, like um, um, there were reports of a few major stores in London where there was like one or two people waiting to come in for the deals. I saw a video about think, that on Twitter. Yeah. It was like one like person on... waiting outside. <laughs> oh, I saw that on Reddit, yeah. Yeah, it's like online I think it did okay. But there wasn't the massive rush that there was, I think, every other year. I mean, UK just kind of borrowed it from America and in America it might still be a huge deal. It's but never been as big here. here. It's yeah, just kind of die. It's just kind of gone down. No one's that bothered. Although the reason I read, at least in the papers, is that um, a lot of people are too worried about the Brexit deal going on right now because of the economy. That no one's willing to spend all that money. They're all saving it just in case something goes wrong. Because mm-hmm. we're UK is such an unsure environment at the moment. Yeah. Though. So, that's just. I just thought there was a, a funny uh, thought that people are not willing to spend for once. Yeah. But anyway, back to the gaming news. The uh, next one we had was recently Nintendo announced a massive update to Splatoon 2 with new modes, new maps, and finally the ability to switch out your weapons from the menu and not have to leave your game and go back to I'd like to, the... to take credit for that because of my <laughs> rant <laughs> that I had on this program like a couple months ago. You're That's welcome. It. Nintendo heard and they were like, oh, jeez, we can't anger push anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so... I haven't got Splatoon 2 yet. It's one of the yeah. games to get, that I want to get for Christmas, although it's really hard to find at the moment. Like, it's sold out on Amazon and everything. It's weird. I've got it in my basket. But, um, the price keeps fluctuating round. Fluctuating, does it? <laughs> yeah. So I think on Black Friday it went down. They added some more, and it went down to like thirty-five quid. But now it's last I saw, it's back up to fifty. Yeah, All it's fifty out. now. Like, <laughs> I think it's like fifty, and you'll get it when it arrives in something like that. But anyway, oh, that's f- it's forty-five. Uh, Splatoon two. Yeah, they were like actually this is so, and it's all free, of course. A rather big update with some actual rather wanted for features, which I'm just really glad about. Yeah, because it show, at least it shows that they're listening, and it also show, I feel like Splatoon One. Maybe it's because I don't own Splatoon Two, and I just haven't been following it as much. But Splatoon One was getting quite decent content updates at a regular pace, but I haven't heard anything really for Splatoon Two apart from the occasional weapon being added. Yeah, it's like. I think they had like two or three updates before this. It's been out for a while. At least that I can remember. Yeah. And have you heard of anything or? Uh, my brother has it, but he hasn't played it that much. So I'm not too sure. Uh, well, hopefully it continues on this. I mean, it's still got, it's what, like half a year in now? Mm hmm. So, um,. We'll see what it's like after a year and whether or not they do another Splatfest for the two stars to fight it out again. But uh, or, or maybe they'll continue it longer because of the fact it's come so early in the Switch's lifestyle style life cycle. I don't feel like they'll release a Splatoon 3 for the Switch. No, and I think it'll be like start... a once one in a generation. Yeah. So like I, I but I, at the same time I can't see them abandoning Splatoon so early either, so yeah, it's still a system seller, especially here in Japan. So, and how how is Switch stock actually? Just quickly in Japan, because I was um I was just I thought I'd go a little window shopping around some of the shops in my work, and I was surprised to see that we had a ton of Switches and actually a ton of SNES classics in stock over here. Both are sold out. Or is it all sold out still? Yeah. Jeez, so maybe maybe pe- people should shop at Smith's Toy Store instead. They had tons. It's like going up to the ceiling. I was like, oh, wow. Especially for the SNES classics, I just assumed they would all be sold out. Yeah, and like the the resale price is really high for both of them as well. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So, 
there. Well, you should come to England. It's che- they're cheap here and they're region free. <laughs> yeah. fly, fly over to the UK, buy a Switch, fly back. It's well, definitely I heard, be worth uh, it. I heard from someone that a lot, what was happening was that a lot of people were coming from other Asian countries and buying Japanese stock and then selling them in their countries. Hmm. Interesting. So, like, if you go to, like, Hong Kong or China, then you'll find lots of switches and stuff. Can Nintendo still release their systems in China yet? Is that a thing that they can do now? Because I knew they couldn't for ages. I'm not sure. I know that... Didn't they release Pokemon in China? They did release it in Chinese language, but... Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Mm. Don't know. Anyway, I guess one more news uh, story to go on today, and this one's not Nintendo-related... But it's been such a big news story recently that I figured we'd talk about it. EA and Star Wars Battlefront 2 obviously saw a lot of crap recently because of the whole loot box thing. And loads of people were going mad about it and complaining. And the current story is that Disney had to step in and get them to remove all of the loot box stuff. Although EA did say that they would add it again later on, probably once everyone's kind of forgotten about the controversy, they'll slip it back in, piece did, by uh, piece. Was it confirmed that Disney actually stepped in? It's not confirmed. It was the current uh, rumor story floating around. Um, I can't remember exactly where the source was originally, but it was said that um, when re- journalists were investigating it, they they found out from someone within AEA that Disney had kind of been like, you can't do this. <laughs> you can't give the Star Wars name such a bad image right before the new film comes out. Stop this. Or we'll revoke the license. And so EA obviously stops it. But it's caused obviously a lot of um, countries talking about whether loot boxes are considered gambling or not. With mixed reception, Hawaii stepped in and said it is 100% yes. Belgium stepped in to say they were going to investigate it and look to get the EU to make it a thing. The UK stepped in and said that while they see the issue, they don't technically think it's gambling, so it should be okay. And I don't know if America's made a comment on it yet. I know um, Spazzy said something that was really interesting to me, where he compared uh, loot boxes to like trading cards. Mm, and he said this to me as well. Yeah, and so like... That, I think, is a very interesting uh, concept, because before, I would just uh, assume that loot boxes were gambling. Mm. But when you think about it as a trading card game, then it's less like that. Yeah, you just you buy cards, and you don't know what you're going to get from them. And, yeah. yeah. Which is kind of the same as, like, gacha games, which are obviously all yep. over the place on the mobile market and stuff. I think it's just the... I, th- I think it's just the massive effect... Of Star Wars, I think that, yeah, there's two things there. Trading cards, you don't have to pay any extra, you're just paying for the cards, you don't have to buy any sort of extra game, essentially, whereas Star Wars, obviously, you have to buy a massive £60 game and then buy more on top of it, which makes it bad in people's eyes. And also, I think the odds of getting something good in Battlefront are yeah, quite th- low, whereas in trading cards, they're fairly average. You sh- you're almost guaranteed one rare card in every pack you get, so... yeah. I think um, if developers were to balance it like with only cosmetic things behind loot boxes, then I would be okay with that. Yeah, uh, like locking like Darth Vader. I think it was that was locked yeah, that was that right. was the big that's, one. It's also Luke as well. I think it's the yeah. the stuff where it's the content that will just make you a better player. Yeah, is it just makes it a pay to win strategy, which nobody likes yeah. because it's like, why should I bother putting the effort into this game with? Someone who just put more money in instead of time will be able to beat yep. me. I know uh, FIFA also has the same issue. Yeah, FIFA does have that issue, but because I think I think because it's Star Wars, that's why a lot of people have jumped on this. Where because I think the EA Sports games have been like that for a while now, the NFL yeah. ones and the FIFA ones and the NBA NBA ones definitely. Maybe if they took a pure trading card uh, kind of approach, where they gave you like a rare one every time you drew then that would be like that could be a balance or something maybe i still feel like they shouldn't be in any sort of paid game <laughs> regardless yeah. like even even dlc i sometimes got issues with if i feel like they've cut content from the main game for dlc like with marvel vs capcom yeah but uh 
yeah, when it when it's stuff like this, I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll have to wait till Belgium, because if Belgium's like report into it comes out, set and they manage to change the EU's laws on it, then yeah, you're gonna have to, or game companies in general are gonna have to not be able to use them anymore. Mm-hmm. And well, they might have them in certain countries still. Maybe, but I want. I mean, actually, to be fair, I could see them doing that. But I wonder if that would, with because most things are region free nowadays. I wonder if that yeah. would just cause mass importing of <laughs> games from the countries that aren't. I feel like you have to do it everywhere or nowhere at all. That you can't really do a middle ground. I don't know. They they change ga- games all the time for certain countries' restrictions. Any thoughts, Anvil? I did read uh, a couple of days ago that 2K were going to implement uh, microtransactions in their next game, but I can't find that now. Oh, okay. Do you know what game it was? Uh, WWE 2K19. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I can, I can imagine most uh, trip, uh, Western developers doing this for a while, to be honest. I mean, they've Activision and EA and managed to get away with it for a bit. I can't try to think, has Bethesda done it yet? Has Ubisoft, Ubisoft kind of done it? Activision mm. definitely have. I think Ubisoft gets um, accusations of cutting content for DLC sometimes. Yeah, yeah I think they kind of did that. Well, like Ubisoft's Park. main issue is... Yeah. Yeah. Well, South Park had a... a did you watch that Did You Know Gaming on South Park? Apparently had a quite a messy well not messy but a very rushed and changed uh development mm. cycle because one of the guys yeah. got one of the guys got sick at one point said so that's why the game got delayed yeah like and, a cold bladder taken out or something like that yeah i haven't and they seen do, that yet. um yeah the, yeah i think it was matt's matt stone. Tri- matt stone yeah matt stone because he voices like half the cast yeah. right before they were going to do it last year was put was hospitalized and so they had to delay the game because of that, which is why it didn't come out till this year instead. Oh, all right. But also, they because they wanted it to still be up to date, they essentially rewrote half the script so that it would have more relevant 2017 related news stories instead of 2016 ones, which is also why it got delayed then again. Uh, sigh. Anyway, yeah. let's move on from our news stories to talk about Source Gaming uh, articles instead. So we picked out a few articles that um, we thought we'd just uh, talk about. The first one being the recent Source Gaming Choice we released on YouTube, which is the top 10 third-party editions for Smash for Switch. Just for a recap, although you should watch the video anyway, um, we had Banjo-Kazooie, Tekken, Ace Attorney, Minecraft, Dragon Quest, Rayman, Bomberman, Castlevania... And is that ten? Have I said ten? I'm not telling you what order they were in, but they were all mentioned there. Watch the video and find out. <laughs> yeah, watch the video and find out the order. There's also oh yeah, we also mentioned Puyo Puyo, Professor Layton, yeah. Tomb Raider, Crash Bandicoot, Shovel Knight, and Metal Gear. So there, mm-hmm. there were all the <laughs> that's all the series we mentioned. Watch the video, find out the order. But um, I guess we can give some additional comments on it because all three of us voted in this, didn't we? Yeah, my my uh, I just want to say my favorite comment ever on the YouTube videos from that video where someone said, this is a very boring list made by smart people. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I still feel that brings up the debate. Is it better to have a boring list by smart people or a smart list by boring people? I don't know. <laughs> like... uh, but the only other comment that, uh, that I really, really like is uh, when someone said that our first podcast sounded like a white version of um, Japan Time. <laughs> Oh, we have actually. Does Japan Time have anyone who actually lives in Japan? No. On it, does that make no. us more of a Japan Time podcast than them? I think it. I think it does. <laughs> we have to tell Roger Space about this. Yes, <laughs> we're going to be the the real Japan. That's the, we're going to rebrand. Yeah. The real Japan Time broadcast, recorded super, in super, actual Japan Time. <laughs> super Japan Time. Yes. <laughs> um. Yeah. Do you, uh, you got any additional comments for that? No, uh, I think the list uh, is it's it's pretty good. Um, I don't remember exactly who was in what place, but uh, I think for the most part, I agreed with the choices. I think it's caused a bit of debate over the Dragon Quest side of things because um, 
which Dragon Quest character do you pick for it? And I know you've been quite big on pushing Dragon Quest for. Yeah, just Smash. because uh, Dragon Quest is so big in Japan, and like um, Sakurai has been really pushing Japanese IPs, and so I think I feel like Dragon Quest is a very obvious choice, especially with the new one uh, being on the Nintendo Switch and Square being such a strong supporter of the Switch in general. And also Sakurai has close ties with Hori, the creator. Do you have any um, thoughts on which character from Dragon Quest might get in? I think it has to be Slime, but, you know, like, I know, like, a lot of people say, like, oh, there's no moveset for Slime, but Sakurai has always come up with movesets for weird characters. See, I don't know. See, I, I, dis- I disagree. I feel like it. That, 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 that was the argument I had, I had originally used for Chocobo in Final Fantasy. Yep. Because they are in more games and they have their own series and they're kind of like the mascots. Yeah, but there's no cloud of um, Dragon Quest. Um, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people really like the one, the guy from Eight. I, I, my Dragon Quest knowledge is very limited, but the people who really like the one from Eight and the whole original trilogy of Dragon Quest games were, were about Ur- the story of Erdrick, and he's the one who usually gets referenced in like. Um, extra media when they talk about Dragon Quest heroes. So I feel like one of those two has a good show. I just feel like they'd also, I don't know, they'd probably be do easier you, to implement and make a moveset around of. Do you know slime. that Slime has a bunch of his own sub-games? Yes, I know. So does Chocobo. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's not impossible. It's You're right, it isn't impossible, but I also just wonder how it would really work in Smash. Yeah. Like, Slime are meant to be the easiest enemies in the game, and... Could be I, I, f- I feel like they don't fit in Smash unless he's really going for a joke character like yeah. uh, Lego people in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Whatever, I forgot their names now, the support bots. Anyway, oh, yeah, uh, Surfbot. Surfbots, yes. So let's go on to the next uh, Source Gaming article, and it's your, all about the Ice Climbers in Smash for 3DS and Wii U. A kind of rundown of all the information we know about the Ice Climbers, thanks to their new, the new evidence that Summit might have been at one point uh, in the game's data. Yeah, there's, there's some suggestion that Summit might have been um, at least floated around as an idea for a stage at one point in development, because... Uh, there's a Spanish translation for it that exists in, in 1.0.0 and a couple of the other versions as well. But um, in the article, I just generally talk about like the whole history of the development of the Ice Climbers in the newest Smash and uh, some common misconceptions about them. And um, it's, it's a really, uh, I think it's a really great well- rundown. I, I don't think I've missed anything. I think it was pretty comprehensive. Yeah, I think it covers everything. Um, it talks of. Did you you mention the fact that the a lot of people thought there was a voice chant for Ice yep. Climbers included? You mentioned that, didn't you? Yep. All right, Ambles, do you have any um, comments on it? I'm pretty sure they'll come back in the next game. Uh, mm-hmm. I think without the limitations of the 3DS, Sakurai would try and prioritize them to come back over most characters, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's about uh, we got there's always the argument that eight player smash might get in the way, but um I think if they can get them to work then yeah, they definitely will come back. Absolutely. But, um right. Yeah, next article then on character selection Mario Kart Part 2. This is one that I wrote uh, as the going over all the Mario Kart games from Wii to well, the current one and the future talking about the characters getting in and like it talks mainly about um how they design Mario Kart characters and how they decide them, with a common trend being what I referred to as asset flipping in the article, which was basically taking the already existing model of a character and just starting from there rather than making it entirely from scratch in order to save save time. I think it's for these reasons that like Dry Bowser got chosen, and why Baby Daisy was made from Baby Peach, and why Funky Kong was added in. Especially Funky Kong, because he's a really random choice. It's not exactly like he's a massively popular character, and in fact, this was his first appearance in any Mario game. Uh, I think he was in the uh, so. Super Sluggers before this, actually. 
No, um, the Super Sluggers is after this. Oh, really? No, he's, he's in the Wii. He's in the Wii Super Sluggers, and that's after Mario Kart Wii. Oh, right. He's not in the GameCube one. So uh, yeah, the the Wii one added in Tiny Kong, Funky Kong, Lanky Kong, King K. Raw, and Kremlin crit- Critters. Whereas I think the GameCube one only has DK and Diddy, and maybe Dixie. Well, I can double. I mean, I can double check pretty now. But when I looked this up, Funky, this was Funky Kong's first appearance in a Mario game, and so it's not exactly like yeah, he's been a character loads of people are requesting, and I f- the only reason he got added in is because yeah, he could be easily made from DK, and then obviously we see this to the absolute extreme in Mario Kart Eight with Pink Gold Peach and Baby Rosalina. And then eventually, Cat Mario, you know, Tanuki Mario, and Cat Peach. So, in the end, I, I kind of would rather like th- th- it's not going to change. Whenever Mario Kart Nine comes out, that's still going to be filled with a bunch of um, characters who are based on already Clones. existing. Yeah, essentially. But um, I'd rather they did it the Mario Kart Wii way than the Mario Kart 8 way. And um, I talk about in the article the characters I think will be in the next Mario Kart game, which will, if I recall off the top of my head, Pauline, the leader of the Brudels, Nabbit, Captain Toad, a Hammer Brother, and I can't remember the last one. And then the two th- um, Nintendo characters being Star Fox and... Olimar from Pikmin as the two most likely ones. I can't remember who the last one is now. Um, it was definitely a character who was asked... Oh, I said Baby Pauline. That was it. <laughs> because I'm a pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. But, um... I'm, sur- yeah. I'm surprised you didn't put all four of the Brutals. Well, I was considering it, and if I had more characters options available i probably would have but i had to average it out from what they usually added in every game so the game the game that's had the most mario kart characters added at once excluding dlc is um double dash which has 12 and then i mean like i think three is the least or two is the least but i'm ignoring them because they kind of they kept with the eight roster thing there. On the actual consoles themselves the lowest ever added is something like 9? or No, less than that. Something like 7. I think Mario Kart Wii actually only has like 7 newcomers. 7 or 8 newcomers overall. So I was in, it's taking it somewhere around there. And when you do it like that, I think that they're more likely to add in the leader of the Brudels rather than all four of them together. With that said, that's just an average guess, and I could easily see them adding the four Brudels and not adding her instead, and then maybe not adding Hammer Brother either, or Baby, rather not Baby Pauline, but you never know. It comes to something when Baby Waluigi's more likely for a game than Diddy Kong. <laughs> <laughs> I do think Diddy Kong will come back, to be fair. I think Diddy Kong and Birdo are likely to come back. Birdo especially, she was just kind of snuffed in... Um in the Mario Kart 8 because even though she was removed she wasn't in 3DS or DS she was definitely planned for 3DS yeah it was... there's like data in the game for her, I believe and maybe even DS I'd have to um, I'd have to go back and look but definitely 3DS and obviously she was in Double Dash and Wii and then yeah just cut from 8 well same for Diddy Kong also just kind of cut off but I think I think part of the blame for that in 8 is because the Koopalings needed to be added because they're such big characters in the series and you can't just add one or two you have to add all seven of them yeah and yeah that's just that 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 ended up taking up most of the time which is why other characters couldn't get in like Bowser Jr. didn't make sense to have in when he already had the seven Koopalings and I Dry Bones as well it also depends on how many new stages they have well the stages are always the f- well they always have the same amount of new stages because there's always four new cups isn't there and then four retro cups that's like always the thing and I don't think they think Mario Kart 9 will also have that and then maybe add more as DLC like this one did mm-hmm. but it's that's they true. do they put a lot more focus on the stages and making them detailed and making them better than they do the characters because in the end the characters are mostly an aesthetic choice a lot of characters have the almost the exact same stats 
in some situations. So it doesn't really matter in the end. It's whoever you like. So they can put less of a focus on it, which is why... But they also know that they can't like lower the amount. They've always got to keep adding, which is why they take shortcuts on it. <sighs> oh well, oh well. That's all I think anyway for the next Mario Kart. So speaking of that, the next article was, I believe it's a translation, the blue shell and party element. It was Sakurai talking about Mario Kart's blue shell and how it affects things yep. in the game. Basically, he doesn't really like the item, but he understands why it exists. Because in a lot of racing games, um, the winner is not, is dictated not by skill, but by how many, how few mistakes you make. Because after a certain point, then um, you just can't catch up to the person in first place. So you have to rely on them making mistakes in order to surpass them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Like, I can so, see that. And so, like, rubber banding or blue shells are kind of a necessary item, especially in a, a game like Mario Kart, where it's a party game, in order to make it more fun and more dynamic. Yeah, I think that works. I think the blue shells are a very good idea. It's obviously one that loads of people dislike because it usually knocks them out of first place. But... There is a massive issue in Mario Kart where if you get in first place, especially on lower difficulties, you are just in first place for the everything. And there is no contest, and it's just basically a drive to the end. Not even like, you know, they're just behind me, they're just behind me, no, you're miles ahead of them. Yeah, on 50 cc. I think that was one yeah, of the biggest so problems like... in the Sonic racing game. It was really hard once you were fifth or sixth, say, to get <laughs> up there. It could have benefited from a blue shell-like item. Yeah, just to dynamically change everything around all the time. And I, th I think uh, Mario Kart's items are balanced well enough in 8. Apart from the coin, the coin can just go. I hate it so much. In uh, it, They always have a hard time with items in the first and second place. Because yeah. Because like, it's like, we can give you a green shell, we can give you a red shell. I, I, think, I think green shell and bananas are fine for first and second place because the whole point of there is you're just you just got to defend yourself at that point so like if you gave them like an op item then everyone behind is going to suffer whereas obviously it makes more sense to get the you don't want to be getting a banana peel in eighth place because it's just a waste of time you want to get red shells and all that and so i think balancing there is fine it's just that sometimes i think you can balance it well enough if first and second place basically just get defensive items and the coin doesn't do anything for anyone. So when you get a coin, you feel like, okay, I'm still defenseless now. I may as well have not got anything. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, getting like a green shell in eighth place doesn't help either. Because it's just a bit of luck that you might hit the guy in seventh. <sighs> but yeah, Anvil, do you have any comments on the blue shell? Uh, I, I think it's a great item. Uh, that's about it, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that does it for all the articles we want to talk about. So before we wrap this all up, as per normal, we're going to give uh, some of the secrets for upcoming articles. And uh, I already mentioned that I've got a review for Xenoblade Chronicles 2 coming up when that game launches. And alongside of it, I plan on at least doing a Dream Smasher for the two character main characters from it, Rex and Pyra, as obviously one unit. Because I feel like they're not good. they wouldn't work separately. Or well, they can work separately, but it's thematically better if they work together. Because that's how it works in the games. I might do a Dream Arenas for the game as well. Because I did come across a good location that I think is very likely if Xenoblade Chronicles 2 gets... Well, I mean, it, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 will definitely get a stage. Because I feel like they're always going to add new stages, even if they don't add new characters. So I might do that but it might not come out at the same time. It's just going to have to see how much time I get. And I've still got that Corin article of coming out that I mentioned in the last podcast. It got pushed back because of Xenoblade Chronicles, which has a dead time limit on it. And so I have to do that first. But once that's done, and once this Dream Smasher is done, then I'll move on to that one. So that's what I've got coming up. Push. Uh, I'm working on the Rive uh, review. And then after that, I have a couple of pieces that I'll be preparing for the month of um, December. 
And Anvil? Uh, I'm working on a retrospective on the Simpsons games and their history. And uh, we're doing some Marvel's Capcom Infinite articles as well. Yeah, me and you are working on one of them yeah. together. We just got to finish off the. Well, we got we need we got tiebreakers that we need other staff members to sort out. Yeah. But, yep, uh, December's looking to be uh, pretty pretty full at the moment. So we'll try. We're going to make sure we have enough prepared for Christmas so we can take Christmas off as well, probably. Yeah, <laughs> that'd I'll, be nice. uh, I'll be out of Japan for that. Mm. So. We'll have everything sort out, sorted out so that you guys can still keep reading source gaming stuff even around the Christmas period. You can share it with your fa- friends and family. Yeah, it's, a, it's our Christmas gift to you. <laughs> Alright, so I think that about does it for this episode of Super Sourcecast. So if you're watching this on the YouTube, then give it a like, share it with your friends, leave a comment below about anything... If you want to talk about any of the news stories that we discuss, give your thoughts on them, then do so. Let us know uh, what you think. And Anvil Push, do you have any closing comments? Um, no, I don't actually. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well then, I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Remember to always return to the source and look forward to the next amount of content we've got. Alright, bye. Bye.